Hello everyone, uh, this is the recording that uh, we've made for the webinar that um, we did tonight and I'm just going to run through things again that you'll be able to see things with the videos playing properly and I'll show things in a little bit more of a concise way uh, to explain things a little bit better for you and hopefully you'll be able to see and hear me uh, better as you listen to this recording. So. We're going to talk about um, my perspective on the digital journey that I've been on, uh, the the digital dentistry that I do in practice, but we're also going to explain how uh, you, that relates to the MSc course that we're doing with the College of Medicine, Medicine and Dentistry and what you can look forward to learning uh, by taking part in the course. The master's program is really uh, something which is, is quite special and unique in the amount of um, educators that we've got involved with the course from lecturers uh, from across the world. Uh, and knowledge that's completely unbiased. Uh, there is no other course like it uh, when it comes to digital dentistry, and the um, there's no specific uh, hardware, software that you're going to be pushed. It's completely unbiased, and it will provide you with a balanced education in both the scientific understanding of the software and hardware, but also with the, the usage of it in the best practice and best a uh, way to um, increase the, uh, the the ability of your practice to provide for your patients, but also increase its uh, efficiency and predictability in caring for those patients. So we're going to be covering quite a few different things. Uh, that's me with a cheesy picture, and like I said in the recording that um, in the webinar that uh, it's a fake picture. All these pictures are created in FaceApp. Um, we um, we can use digital technology as tools to do anything these days, even if it means uh, making us uh, look better uh, <laughs> on a two D picture. So um, never believe anything on Instagram. Uh, but the background I have basically I've been uh, I started up with uh, using digital tools uh, going back probably ten years ago. I've been working in my own clinic for five years. And before that, uh, I was working in the NHS for the best part of t 10 years, uh, working at my, da my dad's practice. And uh, basically, I started getting into implants, which I'll go over a bit later on. And then that took me through uh, to get using uh, all the digital hardware and software that we've got these days. Uh, also on the course is Chris, Chris Lefkoditis. Um Chris is the principal of Helsden Dental Care over in Norwich. And Chris has a vast materials knowledge and implant knowledge that really is second to none. Um, Chris's work is absolutely fabulous uh, with uh, with everything um, to do with digital. He was actually one of the first pioneers of digital dentistry in the UK, uh, longer than I think anybody else that I can put my finger on. Um, he was one of the first people to, to use a CEREC in the UK, and he, his knowledge in the field is, again, like I said, second to none. So um, uh, it's a delight to share uh, my um, my stage with him. Uh, lastly as well, Patrick, and uh, Patrick again founded uh, the DDA uh, with the three of us. Um, Patrick comes from Sweden, and Patrick again, he um, he has a knowledge second to none with uh, digital orthodontics and its integration with uh, with Smile Design and, uh, you know, all the various ways that we can use these tools. Um, we also, I don't have a slide here for Quintus, Quintus uh, Van Tonda, who is also uh, an important part of the DDA, he does lectures, uh, and works with us now in a place where we're building and um, Quintus is uh, again incredible uh, knowledge and talent to be able to learn from with uh, everything from smile design to surface texture he really is the master of that side of dentistry so my practice I um, I started up from a squat practice that um, basically was a jeweler shop that we ripped out completely and from knowledge and everything that I had with digital entry those years ago uh, it basically let me put into pra into practice everything that I wanted from um, you know design tools software hardware CBT CBCT design scanners um, and it's evolved since we you know we have you know that many different hardware and software <laughs> combinations in the practice now it's it's, it's ridiculous and mostly it is because of my addiction to technology but uh, we have uh, two Cerec machines, a Trios, a CareStream scanner, 
Uh, we used to have two mills. We just sold one to make way for a five axis mill. Uh, at one point we had seven 3D printers. Don't know why we need that many, but there you go. And uh, that's minimized down now to uh, a couple of our favorite ones. And um, maybe one more joining us soon again. Uh, but um, the three of us basically founded the IDDA uh, going back a few years ago now to create a support and community network. We've got just over 11,000 um, members at this present time uh, in the middle of 2019. And uh, Really, it's incredible how much it's grown. I think it's grown because we, for all that we do our own courses and we promote that, the main thing is that it's uh, it's an unbiased support network for you to be able to uh, call on advice and knowledge and support on these things uh, anywhere in the world. And there'll always be someone somewhere at some point who'll be able to uh, give you an, uh, an, uh, the advice you need. And um, it's really different from when we started uh, using this technology. There was no support network. And the only other societies that were there were really just uh, commercial uh, and biased rubbish that we um, we didn't really want to have anything to do with. So we, we founded this to to help each other and grow something that's it's really quite uh, special and now that um, it's uh, it, it's grown to where it has and involves that many different embassies around the world and uh, all with common values and uh, unique goals to be able to spread an unbiased uh, advice network and you know the teachers and lecturers you'll face on this course as well uh, the the master's course has lecturers that use all of the equipment they're not specifically on one whether it be you know a CEREC scanner CEREC uh, CBTT um, I love CEREC in a lot of ways but there are so many different hardware and software configurations that you can have that might be right for you in your clinic that re the reality is uh, these days you need different educators from all the different backgrounds to give you something that we, you'll take to uh, to give you the best option for your clinic. And so, you know, helping the team there, um, for me, is uh, the, the whole of digital dentistry is just the ability to create something from nothing. Um, I started out with uh, digital dentistry with guided surgery at the very, very start of uh, guided surgery. And, and really, that's evolved now to, to using all, all sorts of different hardware and software combinations um, that that really I, I, I use different things that you know from work better for me um, but everybody's different and how do we choose what we're going to invest in when we're making those decisions that's hopefully what we're going to help you with with the course as well as just the general knowledge that you can gain from everyday courses is really that you know we want you to understand the full digital workflow the science of why these things are the way they are but also the um, the ability to give better uh, have a better relationship uh, with your patient, whether that be through the consultation process, the consent, guided surgery, you know, the intro scanning side of things, or even just manufacturing fitting things on the same day. Um, the digital workflow now enables you to uh, really give your patient the best experience possible, and it's uh, it's all to do with patient communication. Uh, patient communication now is such an integral part of dentistry uh, simply because uh, with patient good commu patient communication we can really uh, involve the patient in ways that that they are uh, completely adept with with you know walking into your practice and using a mobile phone on Instagram uh, or you know just as associating with them in a way uh, from describing the uh, the process involved the workflow that we're going to uh, be using for for that treatment modality that the patient uh, needs. So you know, for us to use these tools, and they are just tools. The education that you know we're going to give you is the the like I said the with the master's course. It's the scientific understanding um, based on research with proven workflows that will give you the ability to use things that that really applies to you and your um, your patient base, which is incredibly important because everybody's different. But if you can imagine the patient um, is coming into your practice, how do we improve that uh, patient communication? What do we use? The, the different tools and everything we're going to cover on the course uh, is really to do with all of this workflow uh, to make you a better dentist, and, you know, a dentist of the future. Uh, one of the things that we always say is that, you know, welcome to the future in dentistry. And it's absolutely true that, you know, we aren't, there is, we are in the future now uh, with digital dentistry. We are living um, the with the ability to to use things which, 
up to a few years ago was thought impossible and the things we can do now and and the stuff on the groups we want you to all be able to produce things far in it, even in exceeding what what we do now to be able to be the very best dentists that are out there uh, changing the barriers of, of of where we have uh, technology and hardware and software um, uh, through all of these tools and you know it, it is all about the patient the patient is the most important part of uh, what we do in dentistry and um, so communicating with them definitely very important whether that be something as simple as SLR photography uh, using intraoral cameras 3D impression scanners and facial scanners or even just using you know the 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 you know the tools the simple tool is an iPad um, you know with there's loads of different ways you can integrate that through consultation, consent process, something which, you know, re these days with the litigation sensitive culture that we have, um, you know, it's it's vitally important to make sure the patient understands what we do in practice, whether that be something as simple as, you know, showing them a picture of what will happen to a tooth when we drill it down to provide a veneer, um, or even showing them a video of the, of the entire process, we can convey in an understandable way uh, what they're going to experience in the surgery before you've done anything. And digital dentistry takes that one step further with using different tools, um, intraoral cameras, impression scanners, facial scanners, and intelligent oral health to be able to give your patient a full understanding of not only the present situation that they're in, but also what's going to happen to them along the journey with uh, creating a, a better um a, be a better mouth at uh, creating a, a more attractive smile uh, with replacing function uh, replacing teeth with implants all of those different things uh, the, if the patient understands what you're going to be uh, doing then they're less likely to be confused later on and uh, and say to you that oh well we you know we didn't i didn't understand what you were going to do there and i didn't really consent to it uh, you can't help but um you know say to the patient yeah, that you did fully understand it because we showed you all of these things and not only that but these days we can show them before we even do anything uh, invasive so it really makes a difference with uh, consent and consultation um, especially with videos and being able to show things in 3D. If we show things in 3D, then uh, it not only shows them an idea of what's there or what's possible, but it gives them the exact um, results that they might be looking for, whether that be straightening the teeth. Here you can see, you know, taking a 3D scan, uh, taking an impression and then showing them why they need uh, to have a bone graft as part of implants. Uh, if we can show all these things in 3D, then that's not just showing an idea, that's describing the patient's own situation in the very best way possible. And so how do we do that? We capture that through digital technology, uh, impression scanners that really improve the way that um, we're capturing that data and using that data with the patients. Problems that we've had before with conventional analog impressions, um, really, I mean, th th we're so far past all of these problems now, where, you know, correct tray size, loading of impression material problems, errors in recording the occlusion, uh, drags and, you know, simple things that used to bother me on a very daily basis with drags and pulls and marginal details, bubbles, tears, separation of the trays, you know, tray fix sometimes failing, it used to drive me mad. Um, and that doesn't even include all of the, the you know the systematic problems of casting impressions, you know relying on a lab to be able to produce a, re uh, a model based on the intraoral situation uh, accurately and reliably. Uh, you know we can look and say whether a cast and an optical scan is the the gold standard, but that has to be only the gold standard if we can predictably follow the workflow to create that. And for us. You know, in a in the majority basis with the you know daily usage, we found that you know that really the advantages are endless with intraoral scanners, where you know think simple things like patient doesn't gag, we can give a good representations directly for the patient. Um, but simple things that you know for me in practice, one of the best ways in which intraoral scanning digital technology has really improved my practice is seeing the um, seeing the scan in front of you. You can see that the scan, um, you know, better than what you would with loops. So once you've once you create a prep, once you've uh, once you've scanned it, if there's an error there, if there's some you know little tag that you've got, or if you you know your undercuts um, um, in your rest in your uh, your prep 
uh, need to adjust in all of those different things you reflect on your on your practice and you improve on it you can see it in in a gross amount of detail that we can very quickly and easily step back and then rescan that small area once you've corrected the situation to be able to very quickly and easily um, improve our dentistry and it's such an incredible really uh, evolution in dentistry I feel that um, it really makes the whole of uh, dentistry safer and more predictable in no small part so what do we do with these um, gadgets and and you know they are tools um, what do we do with them and the things that I love about dentistry uh, with digital dentistry especially um, things like the Iva Smile app and augmented reality in, uh, in general is really going to change what we do with dentistry now in that you know we can see the effects of things straight away so you can see this video here we used on the last MSc residential where um, the students could play with these apps and 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 adjust things and learn how to use them properly uh, but the, you know the all these software and hardware I was lucky enough to um, to play with this when it was a beta tested in, in a form called Kapanu and before it became I was smile and um, it's really remarkable technology and I think the future is really the integration of augmented reality with into intro scanners to um, to produce direct and instant smile design that you can print off and produce uh, in the patient's mouth in a very quick and efficient manner one of the other things is the uh, the skin concept the skin concept is really something that um, I've now I use on a on a daily basis uh, with smile design or even something as simple as one or two teeth at the front of the mouth to create something using shells of teeth to, to make things more predictable. We can plan the entire case if we need to, but using shapes of teeth that already exist in nature to uh, to make the final result more natural, more aesthetic, more symmetrical, uh, using things like the Jan Hajdor Library. So the Jan Hajdor Library is a set of models of teeth that we can integrate with our planning and um, to be able to make the um, the final restoration uh, again look more natural using and uh, natural shapes of teeth and again all of the things like this where you can see the video there with mesh mixer where we're adding these teeth on uh, it's not just mesh mixer it's exacad it's you know it's all of these different uh, cad softwares we show you all of that on the master's course we make sure that um, you're fluent in in using cad software and cad design um, before uh, you get to writing your dissertation so that potentially you could even evolve things further Further. Um, but we also cover the finishing, the finalizing restorations in house so that you can take those uh, restorations and uh, create works of art. And um, it really is sometimes so pleasurable to be able to take a, uh, a something that you've milled out of a block uh, and then produce something matching the rest of the dentition uh, to look very uh, aesthetic and um, functionally. Uh, you know, functionally appropriate as well as aesthetic. So we again we cover all those uh, different ways of doing things, but it lets me be more minimal and predictable in that I can um, produce a guide to be able to uh, you know do a very minimal prep on teeth, uh, and there you can see where we fitted. Uh, a guide using a temporary material to give me an idea where the um, where the mock-up needs to be and then prep through that so that you know we're only taking the very minimal amount of tooth away that is necessary for the minimal thickness of material that we're going to be using in that case so sometimes it might mean that we only need to create a margin but regardless it always means that um, we're looking after the patient in the best way possible and sometimes it can be fun so uh, you can see here this video we can we've added an audio clip to play with the scan and that's game of thrones so wasn't happy with the ending some of you loved it i wasn't happy but i'll tell you what i was more happy with doing a scan than rather than taking an impression that ends up like that thanks to david claridge who's sent me that picture uh, but it avoids all that sort of thing and we get we you know we get patients who have a terrible gag reflex sometimes and you know things like you know this that we did with Pavcara, where we um, we basically used uh, Invisalis to take a CBCT scan, convert it to uh, an STL, and then take that through to um, Mesh Mixer and develop a very personal and custom uh, guide to uh, guide the GBR in that case. 
And, you know, all these things wouldn't have been possible without that digital dentistry. Uh, but the most important thing, it reduces stress. And stress is such a terrible part of dentistry in that, you know, we're worrying about the results of things. We're worried about whether something breaks. And any little way that we can help that with making things more predictable and efficient uh, is definitely got to be better. Um, like I say, guided surgery got me into digital dentistry. And I'm sure I'll be using it for a long time. Um, for me, guided surgery, something I always say is that, you know, I'd always prefer to be that guy um, walking on the edge of a cliff with somebody holding my hand so I don't fall off the other side. And that's what guided surgery and digital dentistry does. Uh, it means that we can have a, a, a you know, a less stressful um, work patient workflow that lets us create something, you know, aesthetic and custom to the patient in a, in a better, more predictable way, whether you're using things in-house, communicating with a lab. Um, all those different things we can you know, give the patient a, a better experience. Um, but guided surgery is just a very small part of digital dentistry. It's um, it's massive and it, it, it's fully encompassing. And whatever type of practice you run, there will be a part of digital dentistry that uh, will revolutionize what you do. Uh, the advantage is, you know, it's low startup. You can still take impressions and convert them to a digital scan through your lab. Um, it means that because things are more efficient, you can turn around more patients. Uh, it reduces surgical time because you're going to be spending less time uh, with your um, taking impressions, with checking the fit of things because things will be more accurate. Um, but like I said, the main thing is reducing stress. It's more accurate for the patient and they better understand the and can consent to the processes, knowing the outcome in a way before um, before we get there with with the way that we use uh, these smile design and mock-up software and and uh, and 3D printing these uh, those results before we use them. But also the patients see something fantastic when they're, when they're on the journey. So it increases patient acceptance. Um, and they, you know, things something as simple as, you know, like the ITERA scanner where you can have, uh, you know, the Invisalign um, design in front of your eyes generated uh, straight away with the ClinCheck software is, is really remarkable in that the patient will see the result uh, as they're chatting to you before you've even taken any payment from them. So in a quick and easy way, that patient understands the process and understands the result. Uh, they're not going to be under any false illusions as to whether you're going to be providing a smile that you might never be able to achieve. That might have been the case with all 2D uh, you know, ways of doing things with DSD and all of that. It's part of history now. And it reduces patient discomfort because if they're in the chair longer, they're not having horrible impressions done, then they're going to thank you for it and they're going to tell their friends about it. And then they're going to come back to you um, with more people that will visit your practice. So uh, it makes your practice more efficient and profitable. Uh, the team approach between uh, you and your, your associates, uh, the other people that you work with, it doesn't even have to be, you know, if an opinion that you have in this country, it could be from someone across the world that you might decide uh, to, you know, get an opinion from. And the beauty of digital dentistry is that, you know, we can now communicate with people anywhere in the world live and instantly. Um, and, you know, people, when we were watching this lecture before, uh, some people were from, you know, different countries, and that's remarkable. And we can do the same thing with what we use, with the tools that we use in digital entry. And again, we're going to show you how to make the most of all of that. CAD design software, there's loads now. There's so many from not just Ceric, but um, Exacad, 3Shape, um, you know, Remexis with Palmeca. All of these different hardwares and softwares uh, really have evolved so openly now it's, it's really a pleasure to see that whereas things used to be more closed and less compatible with each other now they can communicate with each other and provide ways of integrating even if it's something as simple taking an omnicam um, impression and sending that scan to exacad or you know the, vice versa it, it works so streamlined now that uh, it's very very nice and knowing which one is better for you is important because if you just go in blindly and do and purchase some software or hardware then um you know you could get stung it might be something that really drives you mad uh, a, a chap i used to know in ireland that um uh, was really quite sad he, he had uh, one uh, scanner type and i won't mention which uh, that he really didn't get on with and um, it was such a shame that he, uh, he he got into what was wrong for him because he spent a fortune on it so uh, if anything you know 
understanding all of these software and hardware technologies will let you make the best decision for your practice 100 percent milling and finishing once you've created uh, the design if you decide to do things in-house you don't necessarily need to but um, if you want to do things in-house it's a joy and it's a pleasure and i always say that if you if you like doing composites then you're going to love doing digital dentistry and smile design and things because it just gives you control over the whole process. Um, I put a case on yesterday uh, that went on Facebook where we milled four crowns out of uh, the M6L in, in 15 minutes and then finished things off, um, you know, within another 15, 20 minutes. It was, it was in the oven. So, you know, all these different techniques for all these different materials, whether it be uh, lithium disilicates, um, you know, zirconias, the reinforced composite blocks, um, you know, some of the things like PMA, and uh, they each have their indications, and it's understanding the science and the technology behind all of those different materials. Uh, Chris is going to share with you on the course um, quite a lot of of understanding scientific understanding of why you would choose one material over another and the indications for it um, so that even if you aren't producing things in-house you understand the material and the material science um, so that you can then produce a more accurate and more um, uh, long-term predictable restoration for the again the best interest of your patient um, because not everything is right for everything you know it we can't do zirconia with everything it, it doesn't look as good um you know sometimes we want something with a little bit more bounce on implants or whatever whether that be you know peak or um some of the you know things like vitronamic um there's different ways and different way, um, materials that we can use for every situation so overall, the impact that it's had digital dentistry on me and my practice and why you should come on the course and, and learn about all of this is the the impact is is been phenomenal and it's let me really grow from you know taking uh, an empty building uh, and within three years uh, expand uh, to from you know from opening five years ago expand to a four surgery practice which uh, is really incredible and a testament to uh, the technology that uh, that we've used in the practice um, it's it's absolutely increased practice profit because we're, we're less wasteful uh, we use technology that's you know additive with the 3d printers and you know integrating without using um, you know, uh, impression material, polyvalent silicates and stuff like that. Uh, it's faster turnaround, so we see more patients. I tend to not now with the experience I have simply because I like more time to, to spend on my patients and create a more beautiful result. Uh, but it can let you do that, absolutely, no problem. And, the you know, reduced time in surgery, in, you know, you've got to, um, if you're doing things in-house, be aware that you're going to spend time on producing the restorations. Uh, but overall, the patient's going to be uh, happier because uh, it, it's less stressful for both of you. The patient's experience, um, like I said before, it, the 3D plans enable you to uh, better consent the patient to the processes that you're going to do, which leads to happier patients. You know, happier patients, more uh, patient acceptance. They understand things. They want to do things because they know they relate it to their teeth. They spend less time doing uncomfortable things, and so they enjoy themselves in practice more. And going by that, at the end of the day, uh, it reduces patient discomfort. So uh, really makes a big difference to your practice. Overall, the benefits of being lab fees are down, less spend on materials, net profits up, patient satisfaction is increased, and that's the main thing. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to have a practice that's built on um, just you know making money. I want to. I want to create some beautiful things for my patients. And, you know, using this technology really lets me do that. And if we can help you with teaching with this, one of my main passions in life is, is, is teaching. I really love teaching. And I know Chris, Patrick and Quintus and all the other lecturers that we've got on the course uh, are exactly the same. They, um, they, they love sharing their knowledge and making sure that you can be the very best dentist using these technologies uh, and tools uh, to, to really make the most of what you can do in practice and make it better, make it, make it more enjoyable again, get you back into, you know, loving your dentistry using these tools. So for example, this patient, 
um, she came to see me. She had some broken down back teeth, and we needed to restore those um, after you know obviously root canals and what have you. She wanted brighter teeth, but the actual look of her teeth, you know, the front front canine to canine, um, I thought they're really nice teeth, and we just really needed them whitening. So it, one of the hardest things is matching things in, and with digital dentistry, it really lets you plan things and take into account the patient's circumstances uh, incredibly well, like planning the implants here on both sides. Uh, once we'd planned those patient, uh, those implants, then we could later restore them accurately um, and you know simply in-house on tie bases. And you can just as easily scan things and send things through to the lab. Once I've created that nice emergence profile with this case that you can see um, after we'd spread the soft tissues, then you know it we can take all of that into account to create restorations that take the not only the occlusal um the the buccal the palatal but also the it, the the contacts with the soft tissues into account and look at how all of those pressures are going to uh, face the patient uh, over a long term and you know once we've taken those uh, x-rays you can see that everything's looking really nice with them the patient's really happy with the result and you know i'm more happy the fact that the patient's happy um that we've given us something that's that's really um gonna hopefully last well long term but also uh give us uh, something that's really aesthetically pleasing and that's the before and after that so the future for me is 3D printing. As well as augmented reality, I was saying before, 3D printing is really evolving rapidly. And whereas it used to take us two hours to print a model, uh, now we can print them on some of the newest printers in you know, 10, 20 minutes. And um, there, there's some of the materials that we're using is evolving so rapidly where we can now print uh, you know, uh, using some of the newer aligner materials to print uh, that are coming out soon where we can print aligners directly rather than printing a model and then making a, a, an aligner. Uh, we can print that uh, directly. Less waste, less less plastics, better for everybody. That's great. And quicker and easier and you know reproducible. That's the main thing. All of these models that we can use, uh, if we can, rather than it being a subtractive process, milling out of blocks, if we can print a permanent restoration then that's going to be phenomenal for the future where we can uh, really minimize our impact, not only for time, but, you know, the patient as well and also the environment. Uh, I don't want to sound like a hippie saying that, but something which, you know, I'm very conscious of with all of the technologies and hardware and software that we use in practice is, you know, making sure that... Um, uh, making sure that all of these technologies uh, give us the... Um, the ability to produce things without wa being wasteful in the process. And if you want to come on courses, we do do um, more advanced master classes where you'll cover, um, you know, parts of the workflow with Smile Design. The master classes are really geared towards uh, being uh, for doing things with Smile Design and and creating really beautiful end results. Um, and if you go on our website, www.digitaldentalacademy.co.uk, you'll see these courses as as well as all of the um, introduction, who we are, um, all the people that are on all the different courses. And there are a load of them. We've got the Masterclass in Implant Dentistry, Ceric, Smile Design, Ortho, um, the 3D Printing Party, but also the Masters. So the Masters now we, we are doing with the College of Medicine and Dentistry in Birmingham. And the the beautiful clinic that they've got there is um, is really going to make a difference to how we um, we provide the course. Uh, if you want to sign up to it after going through all this, like I said, again, you can go to digitaldentalacademy.co.uk. Uh, but you can also look at all of the different modules and everything that we're going to do. So here, the level seven, the first part. The course itself is structured so that it's spread over at least 18 months, but you have up to three years to complete it. So it's really flexible and you don't have to take a vast amount of time off work. It's a blended course that uh, will give you a lot of lectures. I think we've gone uh, upwards of you know, 30, 40 lectures uh, at the minute and, and that's growing. And the more it grows and advances, uh, you still have access to all of that uh, material to be able to educate yourself. Um, and as well as that, we have two residential sections where the next one is going to be in January from the September cohort uh, where we've got um, a four-day uh, residential 
picking up on um, everything from treatment planning, smile design to uh, impression scanners, and really using um, the knowledge that we're going to build from the foundation, from the lectures. So we go over things like the history of digital dentistry, the terminology and the science behind the architecture, looking at all the different ways that we can use the tools that we've got available. Um, and then we use that and take that and put it into practice. So you learn how to use different software and hardware configurations uh, with CAD design, uh, learning the restorative protocols and science behind why you have to design the prosthesis in a certain way, why you have to prep teeth in a certain way for, uh, for the technology that we use. And for all that we can be more minimal, we still have to take into account the hardware that we use and why it's important to cover that and why you know this course is really going to improve your dentistry is that regardless of whether you use digital dentistry now um, it's more than likely that your lab will. Um, the labs were pretty much with some of the the, uh, the earliest adopters of digital technology and, and they're very used to uh, the um, the hardware and the software and, and 3D printers even and because of that they use obviously mills to mill out uh, the the crowns and if we don't take into account um, how those mills work and understanding the principles behind the burrs that are used in that milling process then the reality is that our restorations aren't going to be fit for purpose then we might think that there's enough room there but actually when you take into account where the burr needs to go to mill out that crown it might leave a weakness in the end result that means that we can um, we, we, we can look forward to cracks and problems that come along down the line so it's not enough to just understand the science and technology we have to understand the restorative protocols and to make our, all of this uh, work together uh, 3D printing again we've got to cover a lot of that it's the technology that goes into the 3D printers understanding that so when you have one company that says to you I've got the best 3D printer then you understand why it might not be and that goes for all of the different software and hardware um, the nice thing about what we're hopefully planning this uh, um, with what you'll be introduced to at the course is the fact that you won't be able to be conned by you know salesmen that tell you rubbish to to get you to buy a 30 40 gram machine you'll know exactly what it's capable of and you'll know exactly why that machine works differently to another and why one might work better for you in your practice so it's vitally important to understand the um the actual uh, components themselves the why they work the way they work uh, and also why how that impacts both the actual use of it and the long-term use uh, in the patient's mouth which then advances further with the diploma stage and the diploma stage uh, really takes things to the next level and re creates a really advanced um, uh, knowledge set uh, using this hardware and software technology from CAM manufacture, uh, CAM materials and CAM processing uh, to making sure that no matter what the material is you understand the the actual the milling side of things, the maintenance and, and requirements for those milling machines uh, but also the science behind all of the different materials and there's so many now that really with 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 zirconias and you know the lithium disilicates and leucites and um, all of these different materials really have their own perspective as to uh, what they um, how they should be used uh, but also what integration you should use and combination with each other um, because we can combine them it's just which we use in the right circumstances for the patient uh, how we finish each of those materials, whether that just be something as simple as, you know, the composite staining bonding protocol for that um, material or, you know, the porcelain staining and glazing. Uh, so that if something fails, again, even if you haven't created it, why it's important to know is that when the lab is, if you're using a lab that then will send something back, if a component of that fails, then you understand what went wrong at what stage. And the same with going into orthodontics and guided surgery. If you see those stages there and think, I don't do orthodontics, I don't do implants. You can see there, if you look carefully, though, actually it's really about integrating the patient workflow so that if you see the patient needs uh, orthodontics, either if you have somebody who could pick up that side in your practice or a relationship with somebody nearby that you can refer to, it's only going to improve 
your practice as a result of incorporating that modality into your treatment. So taking that and guided surgery into account, again, understanding all of those principles with the software and hardware and you know the, the technology that we use is really important to make sure that at every stage, you're really looking after the patient's best interest which culminates in the advanced clinical uh, practice module where we uh, the patient um, we use uh, five patient cases that you supply and we grade uh, there's one in the the PG cert there's five in the um, the diploma and that really gives you into by that point you should be integrating uh, digital technology in, in a lot of different ways in your practice and this is the the current faculty. We, we, we've got a few more that are coming onto the pipeline. So forgive me if there's anybody missed off here, but um, it really is uh, anybody that we can think of as an expert worldwide, we've got to provide you with that knowledge to give you the very best knowledge that you can have in the field of digital dentistry. Some of the guys here from people like Ray and Wally from America, um, you know, Andy Fairbanks, James Cox and Scott Hippie, the lab technicians, VJ who pretty much has everything, Dave Vige who died his surgery, Blue Sky Bio, um, August Lariera, the, the 3D printer matter. All these guys have their own niche that has different software, different hardware, so that you, again, you, you get in an overall um, unbiased, and that's the so important thing about the whole course is to really give you an idea of uh, digital dentistry as a whole and not limited to somebody marketing something to you and that's the that's the that's the bad side of um of things that you don't you want to stay away from that so you know keeping it so that you can uh, really enjoy your dentistry and take the best of what these guys can give you and really make it go to the next level so thank you very much thanks for listening to me uh, i hope you enjoyed the webinar um, there's so much more that we can show with you. I've really given you a very quick and whistle stop tour of, of all of digital dentistry. Uh, if you want to register for the course, like I said, go to digitaldentalacademy.co.uk, click on the MSC option at the top, or alternatively, you can email me and then we'll put you in touch with, um, with register registration and, um, keep in touch with you. Uh, we'll put you on the student group. The very last thing that I want to say to you is, um, not only with the IDDA and DDA and the community that we've got to join obviously is with the courses that we do we always make sure that um, all of our delegates really enjoy the social side of things as well and that's not to say that it's all about party and having a good time that's got to be part of it and the reason why it's got to be part of it is so that you know when you're learning you've got to have a family around you of people who will really support you and that's not just the faculty that's not just me and chris and patrick that's the people who are on the course with you so that everybody's close everybody feels that they can tell us if there's something they want more of there's something they want less of it's you know they're, they're finding difficulty with something they need help with something um you know the assignments you can um you know communicate with your, your peers and obviously not collaborate with that side of things but to to really make the most of the course uh you're not on your own and uh, you know being in a community is is really the thing that's um you know ma made the difference with dda and the same with the courses the courses are there for you guys you know we love teaching and uh, i hope that comes across you know my mum's a french teacher um my you know my dad's a dentist i got into dentistry because of him um and i love what i do because of you know the gadgets and things same with chris and patrick and that um and we love teaching because of that passion for sharing knowledge so the main thing is really like i said taking you to the next level uh, and putting you at the top of your game uh, so if you have any questions please feel free to contact me but otherwise like i said thank you for listening and um, hopefully i will see you in september okay guys thanks very much i'll see you later